And, yeah. and you know, one of the things I, I looked up recently was that a lot of people think that uh, granite is 55% quartz crystal. And I thought that for the longest time. And actually, I found that the composition of silicone dioxide in granite is actually between 72 and 77%. Yeah. So what what do you think they might have been used for? Well, it's I that's a it's 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 fun to speculate. I I think I think they were probably components of a of a larger system. And I mean, I just I I think re resonators is a potential um uh use for them in some ways. I mean, I know like I I'm a fan of like Chris Dunn's theories around the Giza power plant and you know one of mm -hmm. the cool parts of what he talks about in that system is you know, the grand gallery being filled with these, these Heimholtz resonators, which are basically resonators of, of various sizes. Uh, I, I don't really know what they might've been used for. I just, it, there's between the vessels and this sort of phenomena of these underground single piece stone boxes that seem to be either in pyramids or in, you know, deep under the ground and sort of anchored to the ground. Uh, I, I, I definitely think there was something functional going on. I don't really know what it is. I, I think it's, it's only time and more investigation that's done with an open-minded approach is, is going to give us a few more clues to get there. Uh, I don't think the simply just stating that, well, you know, the, the ancient Egyptians, we know what they use. They use dolerite pounding stones and flint and copper chisels. So that's therefore that's how all of this was made case closed. I don't think that's very helpful. I think there's plenty of evidence that suggests that, okay, these, these are far more sophisticated than that. I mean, we have tool marks for much more sophisticated tools than that as well. And just ignoring it and, and saying that, well, no, the dynastic Egyptians did it all. And because we know what tools they used, that's the end of it. I don't think that's going to help us. I think it's really only an open-minded approach to like, okay, let's try and replicate these things. Let's explore all of these ideas about what their potential function could be. Let's find out what their resonant frequencies are, their, the volumes are, increase the data set so that we can do some some more um, just analysis across a broader range of, uh, of, of examples. I think that's going to help us. The wheels are slowly turning on that stuff, but I think it's only when we apply ourselves and try and figure out a bit more that we might get to some of the actual functions, but I, I don't really know what, what they might've been useful. Well, you mentioned Imhotep and I mentioned him as well. Yep. Um, what are your thoughts on Imhotep and he seemed to be one person during the dynastic period that really had some connection to maybe something pre-dynastic. It seems like it. I mean, for sure. I mean, the guy's a polymath, right? I mean, genius mm -hmm. uh, designer. I mean, he's he's not just the, the villain from the mummy films that people might recognize <laughs> the name. No. Uh, you know, worked for Joza. He was he was venerated throughout the, the, the history of... Uh, the dynastic Egyptian civilization, they were talking about him thousands of years later and still um, worshiping him or, or creating shrines to him. He came up, I mean, he supposedly designed the step pyramid and he, you know, came up with these ways, I think, of replicating some of these vessels. Yeah, it does seem like he might have had a connection to pre dynastic times in the builder culture. I mean, the Egyptian culture themselves say they have a connection to it, right? They talk about their own history, Zeptepi, the Shemsu Hor you know, 36,000 years of history before the, the first dynasty ever started that, you know, we arbitrarily decide is just myth and legend, but they called their own history. Because at that time you hadn't made the connection yet with the vases. No. But um, what was your feeling in, in hearing that? I, I mean, it's, it's, I, it was, I guess another, another sort of confirmation that there is a degree of intelligent design that has a system behind it that goes into making these things. So uh, yeah, I, I, and now, you know, see things like slope angles and, and there's, there's a significance attached to those slope angles that you've discovered. That's really mm -hmm. interesting to me. So it's, I do think we're just looking at more evidence for this, uh, this idea that there was, you know, a, a, a culture that predated the known ones that was evidently wiped out in cataclysm, which is the story that is told to us through pretty much every culture around the world that was was here on this planet at some point that had reached this significant heights they were they were, they were executing in in stone and building things uh for whatever purpose yeah right. probably well i think he built it either rebuilt it or he built it on top of that mm -hmm. pre-existing subterranean yeah uh, infrastructure like a, big, a, big uh, like a in super invasive renovation project <laughs> yeah 